From the moment an embryo is three weeks old till the day an organism dies, the heart never takes a break. The heart cell is unique in that it incorporates some features of uh, brain cells and some features of muscle cells all together. It, it's actually an amazing thing to see cells in a dish that just without any stimulus just start contracting. It's that property that allows the cells in unison to generate force and pump blood through the body. There are nearly a million people in the United States every year who have a new heart attack. A vessel in the heart that normally would supply blood to the muscle uh, gets clogged. And when that happens, all of the muscle that that blood vessel would normally supply with nutrients dies. An individual may have trouble walking up a flight of stairs, even a single flight of stairs. They may park their car at work and have trouble and have to stop several times trying to walk across the street to get to work. There are a variety of approaches we use right now to help people who are left with damaged hearts, but none of them actually get to the root of the problem, which is replacing that damaged heart muscle. And that's where our focus has been at Gladstone. And you have enough for how many mice today? So I have enough for like three mice. What we're essentially doing is diverting a population of cells that normally would go to making scar and hijacking them and turning them into muscle instead. We like to think of our, our new approach as the next generation of cellular reprogramming technology. In a mouse model, we can create and mimic a, a heart attack. We do a more limited type of heart attack that doesn't result in too many symptoms in the mice and doesn't cause death. We first anesthetize the mice so they don't feel any of the pain. It's almost out. There are billions of muscle cells in the heart that are important for the squeeze of the heart. But there's an equal number of cells that are really there to support the muscle cells and sort of form the architecture of the organ. The support cells are the ones that actually make the scar after a heart attack. And the breakthrough we've made is that we found a way to genetically engineer these cells to make new muscle instead of scar. And that's the approach we're taking uh, to regenerate damaged hearts. So what we've been able to do right now is and mimic a heart attack by tying a suture around the coronary artery, which is a vessel that gives blood to the heart, after which we inject the reprogramming genes directly into the muscle of the heart. That's where we're taking these support cells and with these three genes, converting them into new muscle in that area. Three months after the injury, what we find is quite remarkable. Using ultrasounds on these animals, what we see is that the heart's function is greatly restored. The ultrasound uh, provides us an image of the walls of the heart and the valves in the heart and shows how it squeezes and relaxes with each heartbeat. It's very close to normal in the amount of blood it's able to pump out to the rest of the body. There's still some scar, we can see that, but embedded within the scar tissue is new muscle. The first generation of the reprogramming technology was to convert a skin cell into a stem cell. And then we would take the stem cell and then turn that into, say, a beating heart cell. And what we've done here is essentially bypassed the stem cell stage of that series of reprogramming events. And we can now take one of these support cells in the heart and not turn it into a stem cell, but rather directly into an adult heart muscle cell. There are several challenges that remain to get this new reprogramming approach into patients. One of those is that we have to make sure that it's scalable to the size of a human heart, where instead of thousands of cells that we might need to regenerate in the mouse, we may need millions uh, in the human heart. The second thing that we have to do is to make sure that this will be a safe approach, and for that, we will likely use a larger animal model that's closer to human, such as a pig. And then the, the final thing that we really have to work out is what is the best way to deliver the reprogramming genes into the cells of the heart. Fortunately, most people don't realize uh, how special these cells are. 
uh, because that means they've never had a problem with it. If people had a better appreciation of how unique and valuable their heart cells are, uh, that might spur them to be more protective of them.